Yeah, uh, so, um, so I'm I'm now drag you back um, to the J JWC uh, glory and uh, show you some of the high redshift res results from a more uh, of a, uh, a theoretical perspective. So, but I. All right, but I thought about starting this talk from um, uh, with a little bit of access with everyone involved. So this is an image that's taken by JWC Neocam. Uh, this is uh, SMAC uh, 0723. This is a, a Redshift 0.4 uh, galaxy cluster. It's a lensing field. You can see the lensing structures already here, those arcs. So if I tell you that, oh, if I tell you that there is a redshift 16 candidates in this picture, would you be able to find it? So, <laughs> so I expected that the projector is not really good. So I'm, I'm gonna give you a little bit help. So I'm gonna tell you that this galaxy is actually within this small box and uh, better I'm gonna zoom in here and uh, now can you find uh, this galaxy? And I was not expecting the quality of the projector to be this bad, but I, I did I, I did some more uh, prepare, uh, preparation. So I'm gonna tell you this galaxy is actually here. So and uh, keep zooming. Oh, oh. It's gonna be horrible, but let's keep doing that. So and I'm gonna give you choices. Right, I'm gonna give you six choices, and would you be able to tell which one is a ratio of sixteen candidates? So, anyone want to? Uh, no. All right. So this is basically what I was uh, feeling when I look at this image. Like I, I, I don't know which one is it, but I'm gonna tell you, you cannot actually see it in this image because it is too faint. Um, but you must have heard this kind of uh, uh, stories that JWT have discovered a lot of high redshift galaxies and they have been challenging the standard galaxy formation model. So I'm now showing you what they mean by challenging the galaxy formation models. So those are the, uh, that, uh, the, the, the data that they, they were using to uh, propose those high redshift candidates. But of course, observers have their uh, fancy tools. So for, in, for instance, if you cut off that small pieces and you increase the contracts, you do see something out there. And this is a compo uh, composite image using multiple wavelengths from JWST. And uh, if I show you the image of this candidate in the different wavelengths, you could actually see it in some of the long wavelengths filters, but not the, um, the shorter ones. So this is already an indication of a lemma alpha brick uh, that was introduced by the intro, uh, intro intergalactic medium that absorbed those UV photons. And if I just um, plot the integrated flux as a function of the uh, wavelengths on this plot, this is what we call the SED. And uh, I'm going to show you the brightest galaxy that we can find in our um, standard galaxy formation model at this redshift. So we have a simulation which uh, has a volume of 300 kumumi megaparsec. Oops, spoil. Uh, and this is three orders of, of magnitude larger than the volume that JWC are actually probing. So, and I did the estimate. If you uh, want to actually uh, have at least one galaxy, one relative 16 galaxy with such high luminosity, you have to have the capacity to simulate all of the observable universe, which leads to one of the uh, implication that JWST uh, uh, redshift 16 candidates are not consistent with the standard galaxy formation model. Um, and I have been talking about standard galaxy formation model for a while. So what is a standard galaxy formation model? So we have heard about hydro simulations, about eagles, elytris from yesterday. They are the golden standards in this field. And we also have heard uh, several semi-analytic relatives from um, Daron, Adam, and also Claudia. And we also heard some of um, the results from uh, our group using Meraxis. So which one is the standard galaxy formation model? So I'm, 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 I'm trying to spend a few uh, minutes on this topic and uh, let's see if you uh, agree with, with me. So we are all cooking something, like right? 
I'm definitely cooking something different than what uh, Malo showed yesterday. But what we are doing is we are trying to find all these ingredients, the essential ingredients that we know that are important to galaxy for, for formation. Uh, whether you model it uh, in such way or a different way, whether you want to split the disk into uh, different rings or you want to have a, a radio mode uh, dominated edging of feedback or a jet mode dominated feedback, I don't think those are matters. Those are your own choices. However, those are important ingredients that you should have when you are cooking something. Uh, and you put all your ingredients into your magic computational boxes and that gives you a mock universe that gives you a fake universe and uh, you look at your universe and compare to the real one come to the reality and you find maybe your universe has too few galaxies so you tweak those uh, three uh, knobs in your recipe and you make sorry, you make another one and uh, maybe this time the galaxies are too uh, blue and you take the three parameter maybe add a little bit more feedback and you, you make another one you, you keep making it until one day you find a a mock universe that looks just like the real ones. So um, you can do it by hand, but in our group, we, we develop some Bayesian frameworks that you know compare the uh, mock universe to the real universe uh, in a statistical way. So you can you don't need to actually you know go there and tune tune the knob by your hand. Um, so this is our predicted uh, galaxy UV luminal function. The, Data should be there, but for some reason it's not there. But trust me, this model predicts a, uh, a, a very representative universe in terms of representing the, um, reproducing their non-UV uh, properties. Uh, we have seen similar plots yesterday. For instance, Claudia showed uh, the shark's results, which can produce a wide range of um, uh, luminosity functions across different wavelengths. So here we are focusing on the non-UV ionizing um, uh, uh, properties. So here I'm showing you the evolution from all uh, uh, from, from the very high redshift, redshift 20 to the lower redshift. And uh, um, I should have have the, dat dat uh, the data here, but the agreement with the uh, uh, observation is quite extraordinary. In particular, if you look at the early unit, um, the early data. So to me, uh, this come back to the definition of a standard model. So to me, a model that can be called a standard of or, or, or your fiducial model is a model that has to have the right amount of everything. So you have to have star formation, uh, dust attenuation, uh, feedback. Um, so I want to make the, um, the an analogy of cooking a carbonara. Right? So you, you, for, for me, the standard would be you have the... Uh, Guacale for the uh, bacon, you need to have pecorino for the cheese. You can add, maybe add a little bit bake, uh, bacon or onion if you want to go crazy. You, you can change the cheese a little bit, maybe to something else, but you have to have those ingredients. Um, the second character that a fiducial model or a standard model should have is the product. The, uh, your carbonara has to be good for people to take it. So I was trying to show you that in in terms of our prediction, it has a good um, uh, 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 UV luminosity function, which represents a huge dynamic and and also the time scales, which means that this is at least a statistically representative sample of the real universe. And then you can do your own studies using that. So, however, if we so I do have data here. So, if if we really come to the very early uh, universe and look at the JWC data, they're actually challenging us. So the data is shown here as the blue curve, sorry, blue dots. And this is our standard galaxy formation model. So this uh, shows that uh, we are seeing orders of ma uh, magnitude more galaxies than we should have. And uh, this again is saying that uh, those uh, candidates might not be consistent with your standard galaxy formation model. However, they are there. And if they are really at ratio of 16, can you actually produce that? So you could still do that. For instance, I'm showing another model here where you basically need to switch off all the feedback and have maximized star formation efficiency. So this has been um, uh, showing among different theoretical group that for all the redshift uh, a higher, uh, higher than redshift 16 galaxies, you should have a very minimum feedback and very strong uh, star formation efficiency. So in the next uh, 
two, min two, two minutes. So I'm gonna show you what you can do with this model, with a galaxy uh, formation model. So I showed you this SED uh, of this galaxy, and also this is the brightest galaxy that you can find in Friedrich model. So can you actually find something similar and looks just like this galaxy still within the standard galaxy formation mo model? The answer is yes. And we actually find two different set of uh, galaxies that also mimic such SED. So the first one would be a dusty galaxy, which is the purple one, a dusty galaxy, which has significant uh, dust attenuation of the UV photons. So this dashed curve shows you this uh, galaxy with uh, no dust uh, at, at, at attenuation. And then you subtract it because of dust attenuation, you match the observed SED. And the second cat um, a, a second type of galaxy that can also match this uh, observation is quiescent galaxy. So we heard some from Tamir already. So a quiescent galaxy has this bummer break, which can also mimic uh, such a break, which are normally considered as Laban break. Okay, so if they are real, and if they are really from Redshift 16, what would they look like in, your, uh, in, in, in our alternative universe? where the feedback is very small and the efficiency for star formation is very strong, is this too. So they are uh, uh, both highly efficient in converting their gas into stars. We found a, a stellar to bion ratio almost close to the cosmic mean. This means that all of your bions in the galaxy or in the halo has to be in the stellar form. And uh, depending on the model, you can either have uh, uh, some sort of dust attenuation, which means that you can push the redshift of this uh, galaxy to a bit lower, maybe redshift uh, 11 or 10. Uh, however, if you don't have dust, like what uh, people normally expect for high redshift universe, uh, you should have a candidate which are sitting at redshift 16. So we also look at uh, other galaxies. So this, uh, I try to do I try to be as inclusive as possible, but it turns out there are too many uh, candidates nowadays. So I just basically group them into three different catalog. So we found that for uh, Fenton galaxies at redshift around 12, they are still consistent with the galaxy formation model. Uh, sorry, the standard galaxy formation model. However, if you look at those bright galaxies uh, for the redshift 12 ones, they are challenging, but you can still uh, make the arguments about cosmic invariance, so you 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 can still find them in your standard uh, standard model predictions. However, as I showed you before, the redshift sixteen ones are challenging. They, you cannot reproduce them within the standard for, um, uh, form uh, unless you take <coughs> those three parameters dramatically. So I will leave you with my conclusion conclusion here and uh, advertise that this work has been put on archive and submitted on. Uh, 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 to um, uh, to monthly notice, and it appears on archive this Tuesday. So go check more. There are more good stuff. Thank you.